of frustration. Silly mistakes again. Full of despair. I don't even know if I'll have a club tomorrow. From years of hurt, disappointment and relegation. It could be League Two next season. Bolton are down, Norwich are down. Two British football fans have had enough. Canary Bird Elliot Holman and Wanderer Henry Hewitt are in search of glory. Get in! Pride. It's been a joy to watch. Passion. Nanny! In search of silverware. MLS Cup champions, baby! And they found... ATL. Orlando! Major League Soccer. Welcome to the MLS UK show. I'm Henry Hewitt and here we are for Season 3, Episode 9. Who'd have thought that during lockdown... We'd have got to episode nine. Not me, for sure. Uh, right, we've got a bit of an FC Dallas special for you today. And we've got some exciting news that we need your help with. That's all what's coming up on today's episode. This is the MLS UK Show. The MLS UK Show with Lucid FC. A distinctively modern, casual fashion label. Take a look at lucidfc.us or lucidfc.co.uk and see why celebrities love the look. This season's current line is called What's Your Effing Club? Which is your F? Football, fashion or film? If it's football, you're in the right place. Film, the MLS UK show podcast is now available to watch on YouTube. But fashion... It's always lucidfc.us or lucidfc.co.uk. Yes, thank you to Lucid FC, as you can see here. I'm wearing one of their jumpers today. Uh, head to their website or their social media channels to uh, check out what else they've got in this season's collection. And uh, we really do thank them for their support this season. Uh, right, MLS is coming back. It's been announced that uh, there's going to be a tournament in Orlando that uh, the matches will lead to somebody winning it and winning a trophy, but then the results will also count to the end of the season. I'm a bit confused, but I tell you what, somebody who isn't and somebody who's on the ball with this is my esteemed co-host, a man that, I've got to admit, I'm, I'm kind of missing after three months being away. It's Elliot Holman. So he sent me a voice note just explaining what this Orlando tournament is all about. Thanks, mate. I miss you. It's been talked about for literally months but it is finally happening. The Orlando tournament is coming to save us from our pathetic soccerless slumber, and it's going to be epic. You know when you give up fast food for months and then boom, you just go all in, order the whole menu. That, it is going to be non-stop soccer. We're expecting game after game from morning till late at night as the teams try and get up and running for 2020. Try and get some points on the board and maybe even lift some silverware as well before returning to their own cities and stadiums to continue the final part of the season. We expect these games to count towards the overall standings in MLS this year, with most rumours suggesting there'll be um, a few groups, so there'll be group stages, where teams will all play each other in that group before progressing to the knockout stage. I think just for a bit of fun and to lift some silverware at the end. Now, hosts Orlando City, I say hosts, it's the nearest city, Host Orlando City, MLS Cup champions Seattle, Supporters Shield winners LAFC and Open Cup winners Atlanta are expected to be separated from each other and put into different groups. Thank God for that. Uh, teams will travel to Orlando at the end of June and will have two weeks to train before the tournament begins. Let's get some soccer on. Thanks for that, Elliot. So hopefully MLS will be back very soon. It's not as we know it, but at least it's something... And uh, hopefully as well, we can get you back together. Me and Elliot back together for a proper MLS UK show episode. Uh, even though I must admit, uh, I have been enjoying the isolation interviews that we've been doing. Uh, if you have missed any of our isolation interviews, then you can catch them up either on our YouTube channel to search MLS UK show or through your podcast provider. But uh, make sure you subscribe to both while you're there. And then you get to know of any new episodes that drop. And uh, we've caught up with uh, Chris Cadden from Columbus Crew, uh, Lawrence White from Atlantic United, Patrick Segrist, he kicked things off for us. He's, uh, of course, of New York Red Bulls. And we also spoke to ESPN's commentating legend, John Champion. Now, if you've not heard that interview, uh, it was with me now uh, nearly a month ago. And uh, it was great chatting to him. We got to know how he got into commentary and what he thinks of MLS returning and find out why he did this. Ronaldo, 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 
Ronaldo! <laughs> Still makes me laugh. Uh, remember, you can watch the whole of that episode uh, by searching MLS UK Show on YouTube and make sure you subscribe as well. Uh, right, now it's time to catch up with Tanner Tessman. Uh, we're going to be speaking to his head coach, Luchi Gonzalez, later on. Uh, but first, it's time to chat to FC Dallas's newest star, straight from the academy. And uh, he has gone on an unorthodox journey to MLS. He could have been a college football star. Instead, he's lining up for FC Dallas. Here's what happened when I caught up with Tanner Tessman. Elliot Holman, Henry Hewitt. MLS UK show. I just want to first of all ask, uh, how are you and uh, how are you enjoying being back in training? Oh, I'm doing great. Um, training's been real fun. We got a lot of competitions, which is uh, something you lack when you train by yourself. So it's good to kind of get some, some competitions, some uh, some rivalries going. But uh, it's great to see the guys out there training, even though we're at a distance, uh, get some uh, good touches on our feet and uh, do some drills that the coaches got for us. So but it's been great getting fit, uh, just getting ready. Uh, hopefully, games can come soon, and we're ready for that. How is training different then from uh, before all this started at the start of the season to now? What have FC Dallas put in place for you? Oh uh, yeah, it's, like, it's just a bunch of individual work. Um, no groups yet. Uh, we're still in phase one, so we're doing a bunch of c combinations. We're trying to incorporate dribbling, uh, different finishing drills, as well as uh, passing into the goal. Uh, with different slots open in the goal with pennies and, and things like that. And then also a bunch of strength work uh, before training uh, with different weights and things like that. And also we do aerobic and sub aerobic runs after to kind of maintain that fitness and try to try to keep pushing ourselves to hopefully get a game fit, even though it's tough uh, training individually. But those are just some of the things we do. And uh, did you have any reservations about coming back to training? Um, you know, while all this is going on, or were you ready to go? Uh, me personally, I, I wanted to get back. Uh, it was great to get back. Uh, I didn't really fear getting the coronavirus or anything like that. I think our, our medical staff does a great job and a bunch of the guys are following the rules. So so we're doing well. And I think it's actually safer if we train at the facility than if we go to a local park where there's people interacting and different things, not getting sanitized and things like that. So I think it was a great that uh, a great thing that we could start back at the, at the, at the facility. So uh, now, just for our listeners who uh, might not be aware, of course, a lot of MLS fans are, but you had a bit of an unorthodox route into MLS. Uh, you could have actually gone to university this year playing uh, the American version of what we call here in the UK football. Um, so what influenced your decision then to uh, turn your back on that and, and sign a deal with FC Dallas? Yeah, you know, um, college had always been kind of my backup plan to, to like uh, Tom said earlier about going to, to Europe and trial and and also FC Dallas first team, but uh, you know, I I had that plan set up where I could go to Clemson and play uh, two sports, which would have been a great experience uh, through my connections there. Uh, it would have been great, but um, you know, the opportunity came after four years, four hard working years at, at FC Dallas, a team that believed in me from the beginning when when no one else was there. So uh, kind of just had to show the loyalty. Uh, FC Dallas showed and they uh, they signed me, which uh, they offered the contract and. And it was up on the table uh, between the two. And, you know, I've been here for four years working hard. So, and that's why I've been here. So it was kind of a no-brainer at the end of the day to to sign that contract with FC Dallas uh, after the, the time that I've put in. So, And uh, how have you settled overall in Dallas? Because you're originally from Alabama, is that right? Yeah, yeah, I'm from Alabama. I moved here when I was 14. And I was living in the house with a bunch of guys. And then uh, two years ago, I moved into an apartment. And uh, I've been living by myself since then, uh, just doing my thing. Yeah. And uh, how much of an influence has the boss had on, on helping you settle in and, and getting you into the first team this year? Oh, yeah, I think it's great. You know, uh, Lucci, he's the one that brought me in when I was 14, uh, put me on trial, and uh, also was my coach at U17 year. So we have a great connection. We, we know each other really well, and he believes in me. So uh, it was, it, like you said, it was an unorthodox stock from the start. But, uh, you know, he believed in me, so we made it work. And, and uh, we started off with four points, which is pretty good. So... I think we do well. Um, and just last from me, first of all, uh, thanks so much for joining us on the podcast. We really appreciate it. But you just mentioned there about a good start. Um, what sort of aims have you got in both your personal season and then team goals? Yeah, I mean, whatever boils down to whatever this, uh, if we end up going to Orlando, um, those goals of winning whatever competitions we're in. We At the beginning of the year, we made a goal sheet. Uh, the whole team put in their thoughts and, 
And, you know, a bunch of those goals aren't there now. Open Cup is gone, so we can't win that. Uh, we can't control that, though. But uh, whatever we fight for down in Orlando, if we play a tournament, if it happens, then, uh, you know, we want to win that, whatever we qualify for in that. And then hopefully season games, uh, we can start playing those after that Orlando tournament if it happens. And and uh, we want to win the league. We want to win Sporter Shield, uh, bring it back home. And then whatever, if playoffs happen, you know, we can't control what happens. But uh, if it does, we want to we want to be the team that perseveres through this and, and comes out on top. And as for personal goals, I, you know, I want to I want to get minutes with the first team and, and, and uh, be a big guy in the first team. And then also I want to go to the U-20 World Cup. Uh, with that team uh, and hopefully bring home a World Cup. It's been a dream of mine to always do that. So, but you know, you can't control anything with all this quarantine going on. So we'll see what happens. We'll do our best and uh, w- wish us luck, really. The MLS UK Show. Thank you to Tanner for joining us on the MLS UK Show. We're going to be chatting to his head coach, Luchi Gonzalez, very soon. But first, uh, we've got a bit of exciting news to tell you about. Uh, we've been nominated for a Football Content Award. Uh, this is a award ceremony that will be at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium in November, and it celebrates uh, the best of soccer content here in the UK. We're talking podcasters, bloggers, YouTubers, fan pages, fan YouTube channels that stand outside the ground uh, after games, uh, all sorts. So we're really humbled and uh, excited that we're one of the nominees. We are in the Best Podcast International section and uh, voting has actually opened. It's open for about another week or so. So we would really appreciate it if you could help us out and vote for us. Uh, Just go to footballcontentawards.com. I'm going to put a link in the description below. Uh, and also, if you're listening uh, on your podcast provider, you can just search uh, at MLS UK Show on Twitter, uh, Facebook, or Instagram, and the link will be on there as well. Uh, go to the Vote Now pay- section of their website and uh, find us, Best Podcast International, and vote for us. Uh, we'd really appreciate it. And what you'll notice on there is that we're actually the only MLS-themed podcast to be nominated and uh, as we, our quest to get MLS out to the UK audience to promote it and to just show people how exciting the league is, hopefully this will give us a chance to do that uh, to a bigger audience. So, uh, like I said, we would really appreciate it if you could vote for us. Footballcontentawards.com. Find Vote Now and then search for the Best Podcast International section. And uh, fingers crossed, you never know, we might be getting a trophy uh, and we'll uh, we'll put a star above our logo. Um, that's what you do when you win trophies, right? Uh, right, so uh, we spoke to Tanner Tessman. Um, now it's time to chat to his boss, Luchi Gonzalez. Uh, Luchi took over from Oscar Pereja about 18 months ago now. They've had a good start to the season of what, well, what it was anyway, with four points from two games. And I got a chance to speak to him to ask uh, what head coaches get up to in isolation and what we can expect from FC Dallas when soccer returns. This interview was before the announcement that uh, they will be having a tournament in Orlando. Uh, so let's hear what Luchi Gonzalez had to say when I caught up with him. MLS UK Show with Elliot Holman and Henry Hewitt. So thanks for joining us from your car. Are you, are you still getting used to all of this? Different style of working? Uh, yeah, there's a new normal right now that, I don't know if it'll ever be the same when we come back. I mean, um, but, you know, we can't control that. I just trying to make every day important with my family, every day important with my, my, uh, my club, which is FC Dallas. And we've been able to do some training the last few weeks on the field with actual players, still only individual, not the, not the team or, or small groups yet. Um, but that's been really satisfying and it's been a joy, a pleasure to work with the players again on the field and, and to have all of them committed to the plans that we've been doing, because it is optional, it's great to see the group uh, be together in that way. Um, you said there, I mean, training is is obviously different in the current situation. Um, how has it been trying to motivate players to come back? And Because I guess you don't know when your next game is, right? No, it's not It's not uh, accurate yet. The, there's some forecasting of when it can be. Um, and we'll be ready uh, the best we can. Uh, I, I'm glad that we're able to train. I, you know, I, my heart goes out. I've got a lot of compassion for other markets um, that that are that are still shut down. That there's not 
there's no ability to train yet. Um, but I know slowly it's starting to open up um, as long as safety is, is, the, is the priority. And I, I know eventually we'll all be on the same page and we'll be competing again. So is it weird this for you? Because I guess in your as time as head coach for FC Dallas, you've always known when your next game is, even when the, the season has come to a close, at least you know of a, a weekend when your next game is. So uh, is it difficult for you trying to plan that when it could be two weeks or two months away? Yeah, it's not easy because you want to always work back from from the next fixture. Um, you know, different in the academy, you, you you really prioritize fundamentals and principles of the game, technically, tactically. So you work on the, on the base of the game, and the competition is actually secondary when it comes to real real development methodology in our club. Um, but here with the first team and professionalism, you got to work back from the game. You need to prepare. Um, knowing who the opponent is and preparing your own group. So uh, physically, mentally, technically, tactically. So yeah, it's not, it's not easy to not, to not know with, with that uncertainty, but I think what's been refreshing and, and positive is as a staff and even, and with the players, we've had to kind of get back to the basics, get back to fundamental things, really get back to our game model and studying our game. And so we've done a lot of video analysis about our game model and our concepts individually positionally groups team and we've also been able to get back to the fundamentals on the field so these these individual sessions are very technically heavy and we've got more into positional things now this last week it was first general now we've got more position specific more functional to their position so it's really been a, a great re refresher and reminder of working in the fundamental way of technique gestures and uh and which are really important in our game now naturally the next step for us is we want to have the players in situations to make decisions and deciding is the game football is about decisions with or without the ball and so that that is the area that we want to stimulate next and uh we're looking forward to it uh, now we've had players on the show before who have told us about what they got up to during the isolation period and the the, the stuff that the clubs had had them doing to keep fit and uh, eat healthily. What was it like for a head coach in that time? Yeah, you know, every day is, it was going early in the morning to the to the office with the staff, uh, finalizing training, executing it on the field, back reviewing it, re and reflecting in the office, going over video, preparing for the next day. So, was, you know, I really love my FC Dallas family, and and I and I enjoy my my routine. I really miss everybody there at the office. I don't I don't get to see now every day, but you know, just staying connected with them, staying connected with the players has been uh, really important for me. And then keeping myself busy at home. You know, I have two young children who also play uh, football, soccer in the club. And so I've been like dad coach, something different for my kids that they're not used to. So um, the beginning was rough. I'm not going to lie. It was, it was difficult for them and for me, but we've both adapted and we're having a blast. I'm, I, they know when I'm dad, they know when I'm coach. And they're training well. They're having fun, and and I I think they're improving, and and they're making me also improve as a father. And and my, the time I get to spend with them and be present with them is is invaluable. Um, and obviously with my wife as well. So I just really enjoyed that. It's been beautiful, and uh, and that's one of the, that's the most important thing in our life. And then our passion of football and soccer is slowly is slowly going to come back. So have you got any future soccer players then in the family? Uh, yes, too. I think my, both my kids are going to play and have youth youth careers, but it's up to them how how serious they want to be about it and how far they want to take it. I'm going to support them the best I can and love them no matter what, um, unconditionally. And but if they want to play and, and maybe go to the next level, play college or something after that, that's up to them and, and how much they put into it. But they have my full support. So going to uh, someone who's uh, a bit older, but only a bit, Tanner Tessman, uh, he was on the show, um, you know, we spoke to him. Uh, obviously, someone that the club believe in and have put into the first team. How is it important is it for uh, a club like FC Dallas to to get players through the academy and then into the first team? Tanner's a, a great example of a player that made the sacrifice, leaving his family at a young age from Alabama to, to join the academy, be in our residency as a young player, have to do a lot of things on his own in terms of some cooking, 
cleaning responsibilities that are not easy for every teenager. You know, he helped our Casa Club evolve. Now we have full time um, like supervisors in our residency that that Tanner um, kind of graduated through and, and and went through and experienced through. So just really proud of him to have a mentality, a strong mentality. Maybe when others were in and out of form, getting opportunities or not with the second team, the first team. You know, Tanner didn't get distracted. He's been focused. He's doing the best he can to be a great teammate to his to his teammate. Not worried about is he getting the opportunity at the second team, the, the first team, the 17th, the 19th. He's just a te- he's just a, a player that's trying to be the best teammate he can be in FC Dallas with some natural gifts in terms of his technique, his coordination, his mentality, and it's, I'm just really proud of him. And he's made a great early young impact on the team and uh it's you know i know it's unfortunate for for everyone that the momentum um was halted because of everything going on but he's been working really hard in this in this moment that's been challenging on his own and he's been really sharp in these uh these trainings the last few weeks and i really look forward to seeing him continue to develop he has a really high ceiling and uh and, and that's a lot because of his mentality not yes he has physical tools yes he has great technique but his mentality is strong, and so he has a high ceiling, and, and I look forward to continuing to see him grow. And uh, finally from me, um, obviously you would have had your goals at the start of the season. Um, have those changed for the FC Dallas season goals in this period, or is, is it still you're ready to go whenever the next play? You know, the goals are, are together. We make them as a team, and we own them as a team, and the goal is to win the next moment. The goal is to to win the next game and that that stays the same and that's in life and that's in on the football pitch on the soccer pitch and that's how we that's our culture together and that's the way we want to train that's what we want to play and perform for ourselves and for our fans um so that's first and foremost and then after that yeah there's some you know there's no open cup u.s open cup so that can be disappointing but that's for every team and that's a circumstance obviously that we understand completely and there's always next year um you know mls cup win the next moment and do everything uh, to win the MLS Cup. That is our absolute focus and desire, and nothing changes with that. The MLS UK Show. So there we go. That was my chat with FC Dallas head coach Lucci Gonzalez. Uh, We have got to say a massive thank you to FC Dallas for giving us time with Lucci and Tanner Tessman as well. And uh, thank you for watching. Uh, Remember, you can watch, you can listen to any of our isolation interview episodes so far, uh, just head to your podcast provider, search MLS UK Show. Don't forget to subscribe because then whenever you go onto your podcast uh, page, uh, a latest episode of ours will come up when we've released one. Or if you watch it on YouTube, press subscribe, click the notification bell, and you'll be told as soon as we drop a new episode. Uh, right, we're edging closer to MLS being back. The Orlando tournament has been announced. Hopefully, we'll be getting more information about that in the next few days, and then we can build up to MLS being officially back. I'm Henry Hewitt. Thanks very much for watching this episode. See ya!